My portrait photographer friends, your lives are about to get easier because in this video, I'm going to give you five simple tips when it comes to quick and easy AI based retouching via Luminar 4. Welcome to SR Lounge. My name is Pi. This is where we do no nonsense, real world photography education for everyone. And in this video, we're specifically talking about Luminar 4 and full disclosure, this is a sponsored video, but Here's the deal. We're never going to give you a sponsored video for something that we wouldn't use ourselves. And by the end of this video, you're going to know why we love Luminar 4. Let's go ahead and dive in. And before we get into Luminar 4, we're going to just apply our basic color grade inside of Lightroom. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So I have my raw file right here. This was actually shot on a Fuji GFX 50, I believe. And it was taken in front of our window lights, but those lights are actually tinted. They're, they're kind of have that green tint on them. So you'll notice if I press W and I actually try to get a white balance read off of the eye, which by the way, you can press W and take a white balance read off of anything that's neutral. So the eyes are a great place to start, but you'll notice that the colors are still a little bit wonky. So check this out in visual flows, modern pack, we actually have a lighting condition that's called green tin. And what that does is it applies the look that you're aiming at right now. We're in the modern pack, but then it corrects out the issues that we would have within green tinting. So it allows us to actually get to good color. Even when we begin with an image that might've been shot in nature and you have green kind of light falling on the subject or in front of a tinted window, like in this studio space. So what I'm going to do from there is just apply dark mode. Now what this is, is a tweak that flips the exposure down and you'll notice that it actually punches highlights and whites up. So highlights go up, black point goes up, shadows go up. And what it does is it kind of creates a nice dodge and burn look with the modern kind of look underneath it. So this is just going to be our basic color grade. You can get to however you want to do your color grade. Okay. So this is how I'm going to do mine. I'm going to try and spend as little time possible getting to this place. Once I'm here, I'm going to click right click on the image, go to edit in and then Luminar 4. And this is where we're going to take our file over to Luminar 4 using this copy file options of setting it to JPEG, 8-bit, 300 DPI. The reason I like to do that is because, well, most of us are exporting to an sRGB file like color space anyway, we're using it on web, we're using it on mobile. And even when we print, oftentimes they're converted from sRGB. In addition, keeping it JPEG kind of reduces file size as opposed to leaving it as a TIFF and whatnot. So what you're going to notice inside of Luminar now is I'm going to go ahead and jump right over to this portrait panel. This is where we're going to get to all of our portrait tools. And we're going to get to step number one, which I'm going to have you open the portrait enhancer and begin with face light. What this is going to do is actually apply light directly to the face. Kind of super cool because we can essentially increase or dodge the face only just to make sure that that's the brightest part of the image. Again, with most of these adjustments, I'm going to tell you that less is generally going to be more. Okay. So I'm going to run this right around 20. Now, just so we have a little bit more working space, I'm also going to go to view and just go hide the looks panel so we can see the image a little bit larger. So if I were to click this on and off, you're going to see that it just nicely kind of dodged and lifted the highlights right over the face. It's perfect. So at that point, so step number two now would then be to go and adjust for skin. We're going to use the AI skin enhancer. And the reason that I wanted to do that dodge first is because I want to get the skin kind of to the right brightness before we jump to that place. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the amount and just start dragging up. And what you'll notice is that Luminar 4 is going to use its AI based kind of enhancements to reduce any skin imperfections. Okay. So it's kind of smoothing skin, but it's leaving my eyes and everything else intact. Now, right around 40 to 50 is where I see a good amount of, of detail being kind of fixed. And if I look at the image, I'm looking kind of at the forehead area. And what I'm going to do is actually keep bringing this up a little bit until I get that forehead right to a good space. Now up here at 85, I'm starting to notice that the skin is becoming a little bit too porcelain like. So I'm going to drop it down to about 60. I'm also going to turn on the AI defects removal. What this is going to do is kind of go in and try and detect any skin imperfections and remove them. 
but you'll notice that it kind of tweaked my freckles. So from this place, I'm just gonna add in a mask. We're gonna click the brush mask. I'm gonna go to the erase option, and I have it at 50% opacity right now, which is fine. And I'm just gonna click over those areas where, uh, and we can use the brackets to kind of increase and decrease the size. But I'm gonna add back in our freckles by just removing the effect over this area. And then we have our freckles back with skin smoothing applied. Click done when you're finished with this step. And you can go ahead and turn on the before and after by clicking this button and slide it right over. And you can see just how quickly this has done a great job of just kind of refining the skin and getting things very nice looking. Look at the, look at the skin on the shoulder down here. Look how nice that is. Okay, awesome, let's keep going. Okay, so for step three, we're gonna jump back to the portrait enhancer. And this is usually where I like to start with eye enhancer first, and I'll enhance the eyes and maybe bring it to like 40 to 50, and then I'm gonna actually whiten from that place. The reason why is because if you whiten first, then you enhance, you can end up going way too far, way too quick. So I'm gonna do that first and then whiten where necessary. And what helps in this, a little side tip, is to shrink down the size of the image. So if you can get the image actually a little bit smaller in the frame or sit back a little bit while viewing the image, you can kind of tend to see if the eyes pop out in an unnatural way. Right now they should be okay. All I'm gonna do now is go ahead and increase that dark circle removal. And what's gonna happen is gonna nicely kind of lighten the dark circles underneath the eyes. And I love how it diminishes without removing, because when we remove, it can kind of look odd and unnatural. So this looks really nice right here. Step number four, you can make any other enhancements that you'd like. Again, we can do things like slimming the face. The only thing is I generally don't like to slim faces um, just because it can really oddly change the way somebody looks. And unless they specifically request that, I'm not gonna do it. Also be careful with stuff like enlarge the eyes. You can make somebody look kind of crazy freakish, although it is cool just to see that this software targets the face and you can actually do that. Eyebrow improve. Now, this one is kind of subjective. I mean, what it does is essentially darken and kind of create a stronger edge, but who's to say that that's actually improving eyebrows? I wouldn't want these mofos darkened and thickened. Just saying. All right, so now we go to lip saturation. We can increase saturation a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit down here and add in just a little bit more redness so we can kind of have a little bit more noticeable lips. And I'm even gonna darken it just down a little bit. We don't have any teeth visible, but we could whiten the teeth if we wanted. So it's really cool how we can target those things. Now, what I wanna show you is one of the additional effects that I like to do quite a bit is this high key effect. Now, if you turn it all the way up, it has a pretty nasty look where it desaturates and turns everything kind of white, bright, high key. But right around 20 to 25-ish, and then with tweaking these adjustments, we can get to a really nice sort of universal dodge and burn that's applied to the image. So what I'm gonna do is drop this high key a little bit. You'll notice that if we kind of turn up the high key, what it's doing is it's affecting the high key areas of the image more so. And what I wanna do is kind of drop that because I, I wanna only affect those areas a little bit because they're already kind of tweaked. Now, dynamic high key is gonna sort of apply the effect around the background of the rest of the image. Again, I'm gonna lower this a bit. And what I really wanna do is start lifting the blacks a bit in the image just to get a little more detail there. Again, turning this on and off, we can see exactly what's happening. A slight and subtle dodge with also a lift in shadow detail. I'm gonna lift the shadows just a little bit more. If you want, there's also advanced settings on this where you have like glow functionality. I sometimes like adding a little bit of a glow. So what I'm gonna do to this is just add 50. And by the way, you can get any of these back to default by doing the same thing you would in Lightroom and just double clicking on the setting and it'll take it back to the default setting. I'm gonna also lower the contrast just a little bit and we're gonna call it good. I don't want any other effects here. So from this place, we're gonna to go to step number five. And this one's important because what we just did, we're gonna save this out as a look or essentially a preset within Luminar. So if I click the looks panel and I can see here, I have my user Luminar looks. What I'm gonna do is save this to a new look. I'm gonna call this sample portrait enhance, okay? I'm gonna click save. 
Now what that does is it creates a new preset and now what I can do is I can take a batch of images from Lightroom directly in and apply this to every single one of them. I would recommend testing this preset on a few images before you kind of make it a universal sort of preset and always kind of keep them more on the subtle side. But as you can see, with just a few adjustments to the sliders, we have done a lot here and it looks really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this and save this out because we're gonna go back to Lightroom for a little bonus tip. So now we're back into Lightroom, right? So if I look at this before, this was our before image. This is where we're at now using AI-based retouching. Remember, you can apply this now over any image by a simple click of a preset. That's huge. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is something I call kind of twice baking. This is where we bring it back into Lightroom and we make additional tweaks. Some of the additional tweaks that I like to do is apply that same preset back over the image. Now, we're not gonna do it here because the effect can be a little bit strong at times and we can dial it back. I like the way that it looks when we came back. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that, but that's kind of that, that option, right? What I am gonna do is add a little bit of warmth to the image and I'm gonna put on a radial filter. So I have a radial filter saved as a preset just so it drops in quick. But if you don't, press Shift M and just go ahead and drag in a radial filter with a burn. I'm gonna place this over the face and we're going to kind of extend it out a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of burning into the image to sort of highlight and bring the attention right into her. On this right side, I'm gonna add a graduate filter with a burn brush as well, because I wanna continue to burn down the right side of the image just a bit more, so it kind of matches the left side of the image. If we went a little bit too far, we can kind of pull it out a little bit to kind of make sure we have that nice glow around our subject. This is where I like to create a virtual copy and I'll apply a black and white to the image. Now you can do a standard black and white just by pressing V and you can adjust contrast and everything as you need. We also have an actual black and white preset right here that kind of dials everything in. This is applying a black and white as if it's been, as if nothing has happened. So it's intended to apply it over a raw image. So if you're applying it over a JPEG like this one, I would just back off the contrast a little bit and kind of darken it down and get to this place. So now, in a matter of kind of moments and really just retouching that was all AI-based, right? I mean, we applied a preset for the lighting condition, we went the Luminar, we just did AI-based retouching, we got to a final look. And this is cool because it's something that we can apply over an entire batch of images quickly and get to a final result. This is exactly what I speak of when I talk about results-oriented photography. So if we look at this before and after, I'm gonna go ahead and just press lights out. Here's our raw file. Here is that final image and the final black and white. Results-oriented photography is not so much about the process. It's not so much about doing everything by hand, but rather getting to an amazing final result with kind of the most efficient way possible so that we can get back to creating more images. That's really always the final goal of any of these techniques. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm gonna include the links for everything below. So if you guys wanna check out Luminar 4, you guys can get links to free download to try out the software. The software is like 80 bucks or something. It's really honestly a great value. We're gonna be showing you other things that it can do and just the retouch on top of sky replacements by themselves makes it worth it. So it's something that I would highly recommend. Also, I'm gonna include links below for visual flow presets and the retouching kit. In addition, if you guys are interested in A to Z education in photography, check out srloungeworkshops.com. And that's it for this video. Hope you guys liked it. Please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.